Hello YouTube. The word homunculus came to us from the Middle Ages and is associated with the activities of alchemists. It is often used in its original sense nowadays, in particular in works of fiction, novels and plays. Um, we offer to find out what a homunculus is, or rather who it is, because for all its irreality it is still a living being. The original interpretation of the word itself was used by alchemists whose goal was not only to find the philosopher's stone, but also to create an artificial person. Therefore, when we talk about homunculus, we mean first of all this human-created organism, which is really nothing more than a myth to some people. Um, synonym, synonyms are the words man, homunculus, and a more modern version is a man from a test tube. Well, once in a while I present research of Russia's brightest paranormal phenomena investigator and author of numerous books, Mikhail Gerstein. This is one of the subjects that he has written about. At all times, people have been interested in the idea of creating similar creatures without the participation of a woman. Jewish Kabbalists try to animate clay uh, figures <clears throat> imitating God who created Adam from clay and breathed life into him. The philosopher Albert the Great in the 13th century designed a mechanical man who, according to legends, <clears throat> moved and talked. Arab magicians decided to act differently, trying to reproduce the processes of fertilization with the help of surrogate motherhood. The Arabic grimoire or magician's manual, Liber Vakai, the Book of the Cow, written no later than the 9th century, has been preserved only in Latin translations. The unnamed manuscript uh, was actually named after the first recipe in it. To create an artificial man, the magician had to take his own water, that is sperm, while it was still warm, mixed in equal proportions with a solar stone that glows at night like a lamp, phosphorus, and inject the mixture into the cow. Having clogged the cow's genital tract with a sunstone that was not ground or powdered, he must slaughter another animal, for example a sheep, and lubricate the plug with its blood. The rest of the sheep's blood must be drained into a vessel and preserved. The fertilized cow was kept without sunlight and fed food with an admixture of the blood of the second animal. In, participation, in anticipation of childbirth, the magician had to make a mixture of sunstone, magnet, iron ore, iron sulfate, sulfur, and white willow juice. The generated formless substance must be immersed in the mixture and human skin would begin to grow on it. The future man is placed in a large glass or lead vessel for three days until he gets hungry. Then it is necessary to slaughter the calved cow and feed the embryo with the mother's blood for, several, for seven days. When the homunculus finally matures, it can be used. If you cut off the little man's head and drink the blood, the magician would be able to turn into any animal at will, the manuscript assured. If you keep him in the dark for 40 days on a diet of blood and milk, and then take out the insides and rub them on his hands and feet, the magician would be able to walk on water or move to any place on earth in the blink of an eye. The most patient magician must wait a year and then place the little man in a vessel filled with milk and rainwater. Then the artificial creation will speak and be able to tell what is happening thousands of kilometers away from the laboratory. The famous doctor and alchemist Philippe Aureolus Theophrastus Bombast von Hohenheim who lived in the years between 1493 to 1541, known under the pseudonym Paracelsus, 
proposed a more humane way to obtain homunculi. In the treatise on the nature of things, there is a recipe. Let the human seed decompose on its own in a sealed gourd vessel through the highest decomposition of horse manure for 40 days or until it begins to live, move or move in another way that will easily become noticeable. What happens will be somewhat like a person, but transparent and devoid of a body. If, on the other hand, you patiently and carefully feed it with the elixir of human blood for 40 weeks every day, warming it constantly and evenly with the heat of manure, then you will get a real living child, as if born by a woman, only much smaller. The little man develops faster than ordinary children and will soon be able to show the owner magical talents. He sees the past, the present and the future. For its creator there are no secrets even in the next world. Paracelsus himself did not conduct the experience, leaving his fans, so to say, to dig in the manure. The greatest hype was caused by the experiments of Count Johann Ferdinand von Kirstein, 1752-1818, or the years when he lived, which culminated in the appearance of a dozen creatures at once. Traveling in Italy in 1775, the Count met a certain Abbot Geloni, a famous occult occultist. They locked themselves in a laboratory and tried to create homunculi for five weeks. Finally, the attempts were successful. The newborns stirred in their vessels. Not a single man was lower than a span, and they looked like minnows. Josef Kammerer, the Count Secretary, wrote in his diary. The nondescript creatures were filled with holy water and closed, uh, closed the necks with the bull bladder. On a starry night, eight surviving embryos were taken out into the garden where they were buried in manure. For several days the manure was irrigated with some substance and the little man in response squeaked and whistled like hungry mice. On the 29th day, Kufstein, Geloni and Kammerer opened the fragrant pile. The vessels were taken back to the laboratory where the little man took a strengthening bath for three days and three nights. When Kammerer was allowed to look at the homunculi, he was shocked by their appearance. Now the little men were no different from people except for the size. The count and the abbot made clothes for them. Men wore beautiful and large beards and women had angelic facial expressions. Alas, the characters of the homunculi were far from angelic. They constantly tried to escape and they were biting painfully. One day Camera came to the laboratory and was horrified to see that one man, having got out, was trying to get into a vessel with a female. The secretary made a fuss and called the Count for help. Rolling his eyes, the homunculus deftly jumped on the furniture and finally grabbed the owner's nose. Kufstein brought this panopticon, I think it means insane house, to Vienna to show the talents of the homunculi to the Freemason lodge named East. They gave correct answers to questions from the field of sciences. Uh, Hamonkulai talked about the past and predicted the future, but when the little men were in foul mood, visitors risked hearing nonsense and insults. In the end, the character of the little men deteriorated so much that Kufstein decided to get rid of them. How it was done, Kammerer's diary is silent. Historians are still trying to explain the events of those years without resorting to mysticism. 
Dr. Carl Schuker suggested that the alchemists had grown large amphibian tadpoles in their vessels. <clears throat> he thinks that the African spur frog was a suitable candidate. In profile, the frog Xenopus livis, which grows up to 30 centimeters in length, somewhat resembles a human body. According to Schuker, the scammers glued to the frog hair and leather masks in the form of faces, hiding everything superfluous uh, under their clothes. Someone with the gift of ventriloquism spoke for the fake homunculus. Rosicrucianism is a spiritual and cultural movement that arose in Europe in the early 17th century after the publication of several texts purported to announce the existence of a hitherto unknown esoteric order to the world and made seeking its knowledge attractive to many. The mysterious doctrine of the order is built on esoteric truth of the ancient past, which concealed from the average man provide insight into nature, the physical universe, and the spiritual realm. The manifestos do not elaborate extensively on the matter, but clearly combine references to Kabbalah, Hermeticism, alchemy, and Christian mysticism. Uh, the Rose Crucians went even further in trying to get rid of animal components when creating homunculi. One of the ancient texts read like this, mixed in a vessel the maid you collected at the full moon, two parts of male and three parts of female blood from pure and chaste people. The vessel is placed on a moderate fire which causes red earth to be deposited below. The upper part is separated into a clean flask and from time to time poured into a vessel where one grain 0.062 grams of tincture from the animal kingdom is also added. After a while you will hear the stomping and whistling and you will see living beings in the vessel, a beautiful man and a woman. With the help of a special manipulations you can keep them alive for a year. You can learn anything from them because they will be afraid of you and will honor you. The manuscript does not explain what is meant by the name tincture from the animal kingdom. Most likely the deliberately obscure recipe is an alchemical allegory and should not be taken literally. Growing little man was considered a difficult and dangerous occupation. Any wrong action could give rise to a terrible monster. The church did not stand aside forbidding on the pain of death penalty to produce people in an unnatural way. By the alchemist's thirst for knowledge has always been stronger than the laws and church dogmas. Very interesting, there was a video posted on YouTube in November 2015 and it gained I think 21 million views. An alchemist from Russia ventured to personally test the magic recipe for creating a homunculus, an artificial intelligent man. The result of the experiment was unexpected. The anonymous author of the video on YouTube said that he was trying to create a homunculus according to the recipe of Paracelsus, but in fact his method is much younger. The grimoire where it is contained was written at the end of the 18th century. Take a black chicken egg, pierce and pour out an amount of protein equal in volume to a large bean. Replace the protein with male sperm and plug the hole by attaching a piece of slightly moistened clean parchment. Place the egg in a layer of manure on the first day of the lunar month of March. After 30 days of incubation, a small freak that looks like a human will hatch. Hide it in a secret place, feed it with lavender seeds and earthworms. As long as he is alive, you will be lucky in everything. The Russian alchemist did not use manure and kept the egg warm for only 10 days instead of the required 30 days. 
When he broke the shell, something similar to a crab or poorly formed chicken paw fell into this substituted container. The embryo was moving, but it was clearly not viable. The video generated a storm reaction. Someone shared the video with friends, and someone tried to repeat a simple experiment. Dozens of fakes appeared on the web, where people <coughs> took out from under the shell everything that could come to human mind. You can only really get an ugly chicken, according to this recipe, if the egg was fertilized by a rooster before the rough intervention. The number of chromosomes in humans and birds differ almost twice. The amount differs almost twice. It is impossible to fertilize an egg with male sperm. Here's what I will add to Mikhail's research. Homunculus from an egg. How such an idea came about. The idea of growing a homunculus as a small person born in an un unconventional way has excited people since ancient times because of the desire to avoid complications during pregnancy and childbirth, get rid of infertility, or to provide an opportunity for lonely people to have a child. In a sense, modern tools and techniques for artificial insemination ideologically emerge from such experiments. Of course, in comparison with modern science, many ancient ideas and practices seem wild and meaningless, but in those days, theories were created through long thought and experiments, often taking place on a whim. The homunculus from an egg, well, Arnold from Villanova. The first documented experiments on the creation of a homunculus were carried out by Spanish doc Dr. Arnoldus de Villanova back in the 13th century. Taking into account that the legendary alchemist was the author of several authoritative scientific books, it is silly to consider the possibility of creating a homunculus as idle fictions and simple legends. It was a real experiment, crowned with relative success. However, medieval scientists carefully kept secrets, so there are no details about the first homunculus grown by men. By the way, homunculus is mentioned in the fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm, romantic novels by Theodore Hoffman, novels and short stories by Gustav Meyring, and many other literary works. One of the most famous images of the homunculus is contained in the poem Faust by Jogan Wolfgang Goethe, where it is created in his laboratory by Faust's disciple Wagner. He has boundless knowledge, but all the time he must be in a flask from where only his voice comes and the glow comes. During the Walpurgis night, when history is moving backwards from the battle of Pharsalia to the prim primordial Eros and protoplasm of life, Homunculus, on the advice of the ever-changing god Proteus, throws himself into the sea in order to get bodily life through merging with the elements, the origins of the corporeal world. The Homunculus flask breaks, the glowing liquid flows into the sea, um, and he dies to begin the path of a new incarnation. Victor Frankenstein in Mary Shelley's novel of the same name in the year of 1818, inspired by the works of Paracelsus and Heinrich Conrilius Agrippa, creates an artificial man. So, my colleague Mikhail Gerstein added this. When biologists uncover the last secrets of our genes, scientists will be able to create little men of any size in laboratories. And I will add, as well as the chimeras, human, human animal crossbreeding in laboratories, and I spoke about this before. But no matter what we say, the research continues, and it is scary. Maybe as scary as unchecked development of artificial intelligence. This is what I wanted to let you know today. And if you like my research and you can support me, please do so through the links you will find in the description to this video. 
Please like my video. Please tell others about my channel. Thank you.